Hi, this is the Social Jello with Angelo show. My name's Angelo. I'm a social scientist, surfer, martial artist, and a whole lot of other things. Coming to you live from Kasai City, Japan, the Social Jello with Angelo show. So, this next episode of the Social Jello show um, is kind of just following me throughout my daily routine. And is heavily influenced by the concepts from cognitive behavioral psychology and Zen.、Uh, looking at Zen from more of a philosophical perspective, psychologists broke it down and looked at how to change the way you live your life by really analyzing your daily routines, what you do to bring happiness into your own life.、Uh, going back more into the Zen philosophy, it's about enjoying your daily routine and having a daily routine, whatever that is. When you wake up, you just wake up. And just enjoy what you're doing. Because as humans, we can't understand the entire concept of time. Time seems to slip through our fingers, right? And really, time is right now, and time is every day, and time is happening at every moment. And daily routines really help you kind of grasp that from washing dishes to walking your dog to spending time with your loved ones. So I hope you enjoy the next few clips. A lot of the stuff I go into, we're going to have entire episodes about. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to check it out and、uh, send them over on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, or Instagram. All right. Enjoy. So today's Saturday. It's my day off. I just woke up. Saturday is I don't turn on the alarm. Usually I wake up around 7 30.、Uh, on Saturdays, I take off. Every morning,、uh, I do the same thing. I go. And then,、um, and then I, well, I'll show you what I do next. First, I make coffee. Next, I take the dogs out to go pee. Hi, Sakura. Good morning. Good morning, Tenchi. Now, if you're asking yourself why am I wearing a jacket and a beard, it's because it's about maybe 2 Celsius, which is. Which is. Uh, fuck if I know in Fahrenheit in 30, 40, I don't know, 40 degrees? Fahrenheit? 2 Celsius, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. There's some calculation to it. It's too fucking early for me to think about that. But it's cold. So then I let the dogs out. There's my doggy going pee. Then I wash my face. Oh, that's cold. I start making breakfast. Toast, some eggs. I usually warm up some milk for my wife. She can't drink too much milk because she's a breastfeeding. So、uh, she takes almost a full cup. I heat that up in the microwave for about a minute and a half. Then I make some scrambled eggs with chopsticks. What you know about making chopsticks? Using chopsticks for making scrambled eggs, huh? s c r a m b l e for that. And there's olive oil in here, so it's pretty healthy. So, if you noticed, sometimes I mumble. I might look really tired. But I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm one of those people. Me? Booyah kasha! Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't tell my wife I dropped my chopstick. Breakfast. I make my wife breakfast in bed every morning and I take her to her so she doesn't have to get up. She had a long night breastfeeding, so she needs to replenish her some calories. Aside now, even though I made some toast, scrambled eggs, and coffee, in Japan,、uh, traditional Japanese breakfast is rice with、uh, fish, usually rice, fish, and miso soup, like salad, something like that. It's not your traditional breakfast.
for us in the West. So they actually call this a Western breakfast, which after all these years, I still prefer. Either way, I take you in to see my baby and the wife in the morning, but she'd kill me if I brought in a camera before she like woke up. Oh, use your imagination. Next, I wash the dishes. Luckily, I wash the dishes breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so they don't really pile up. Oh, Andrew is here. Ohio! 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 <laughs> My mother in law. It's a camera shot. For this next part, I go outside and I do the laundry. We have an old ass washing machine. We have a new one, a brand new one right there. But since I work out and train every day with my martial arts training, uh, my wife doesn't want me using the new one because I'll probably break it because of how much clothes I wash. So I use this old school one, this old school Japanese one, where I grab all the clothes here, put it into a spin cycle over here. Oh, that's cold. And then I hit the spin cycle over here. It'll spin around for five minutes, and while that spins, I'll show you what I do next. Next part, I walk the dogs. And we're out in the middle of the countryside. And then this next part's their favorite part. They make sure there's nobody else around. I don't want my dog scaring the crap out of everyone. So then I grab here, grab the leash here, and this one here. Let's go! Right, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! And it's like their own personal dog park. Next part, I walk the dogs. And we're out in the middle of the countryside, and then. This next part's their favorite part. They make sure there's nobody else around. I don't want my dog scaring the crap out of everyone. So then I grab here, grab the leash here, and this one here. Let's go! Right, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! And it's like their own personal dog park. So this is one of my favorite parts of the walk is this pond. Uh, this is the same pond. If you see over there, there's Tenchi running across the field. And Sakura. Maybe the sun's kind of blocking that view. And then there's some ducks over there in the corner that my camera might not be catching. But this is the pond that, uh, that Joe, from yesterday's lesson, English lesson, he, this is the one he comes in and does some bass fishing in every weekend after soccer practice. Every so once in a while I take out my paddle surfboard and paddle around, but today's too cold for that. So, I'm just going to go on to my next thing. I know most people associate hang drying your clothes with poverty, but uh, in Japan it's actually one of the most preferred methods of drying your clothes. So here we have our, we set all our clothes, I'm going to put up this suck, for starters. Then I'm going to hang dry the rest of this clothes on all the hangers here. Um, on the countryside, we don't have any gas lines, so we'd have to get an electric dryer that probably wouldn't work that well. So air drying your clothes is not only energy efficient and good for the environment, but it's also pretty time if, you know, it's good for time management as well. Here's some emo, or sweet potato my mother-in-law is drying out, and we'll probably eat that as a snack later. It's all organic, grown here in our garden, and we have plenty of vegetables in the garden. Lettuce, we got some cabbage, and I believe under that plastic there are strawberries for the next season. Either way, better get to work. Training, I always do a quick weigh in. All right, just
just under yeah, right at 77 kg, a little over 77 kilograms, which is uh, 170 pounds or so, 169 point something, uh, which is good. I have clothes on. My fight contract for next month is set for 77 kilograms. So right now I've been kind of trying. I don't want to cut too much weight because weigh-ins are on the same day. And uh, I'm doing pretty good. Then on my pre-fight or pre-training weigh-in, I grab my water reservoir here. Uh, it's frozen. Keep it frozen because water reservoirs can build bacteria real quick. I usually put about a liter of water in it, so I try to drink a liter of water through my workout. And, um, and I keep it frozen, like I said, to avoid bacteria from growing, and then I don't have to worry about cleaning it out all the time. Or And it also prevents mold. Um, the downside to this, you go through bags a little faster because the ice does break it down, so maybe you won't be able to keep it forever. You can't keep anything forever anyway. If I can make it last about a, you know, six months to a year, that's great. I have some amino acids, which are essentially building blocks for protein. And, uh... <clears throat> Down the hatch. Uh, I think about four of those. Pre-workout. Just to kind of, um, you know, help out from the muscle tear that I received from yesterday's workout. Uh, I work out, uh, essentially I work out every day. Um, I run six days a week, uh, 35 to 40 kilometers, which is approximately, you know, uh, 20 to, I'm sorry, yeah, 20 to 24 miles a week. I run uh, 10K, 5K, 10K, 5K <clears throat> every other day, six to five days a week. So yeah, my muscles are, I try to avoid muscle soreness by taking some amino acids. Before I head out the door, I prep lunch so that, my, so that Gaudi doesn't have to work too hard. Um, today, some frozen salmon. I already took it out of the freezer and put it in the roaster. And then later when, when my wife's ready, she can just hit this little button right here. Pow! Cook up in about 15 minutes. It's easy lunch, healthy. Be for simple for right now. Then I grab this bowl here. Walk out. And we have a rice dispenser. This is all rice grown in our rice field. Um, we put it in this dispenser. We keep, we store some of it in that huge fridge there, and then we have a few more in the warehouse. And then here I press this button. It gives me two cups of rice. I pull it out here. Pour it in there. Next, I wash the rice. It's really important. Stir it around. And then you, uh, you pour out that, that really thick, dirty water. And then I fill it up again. And I do this two or three more times till it's good to go. And finally, I put two cups of water into the bowl. Put the bowl inside the rice cooker. Close this. Bring the rice cooker out. Open it up. There we go. Two cups. Close it. This kanji right here, I think, is jikang or timer. So I hit timer. It's kind of bright, but it says 12 o'clock on it. I'm trying to see if I can get the number to show. There we go. So 12 o'clock, and then I hit yes. So Juniji, which is 12 o'clock, it's on a timer, so that when I get back from my workout, rice is done, all Gaudi has to do is hit that start button, and lunch is ready. So, uh, I'm going to set up my Nike app, you can follow that on at Podiqua, uh, PR.
Star Four Two One. That's my uh, training Twitter. Um, or you can just Facebook. Check out my Facebook too. That'll show you how much I run. I guess I'm gonna run 5K. So I'm gonna get started. I finished up my 5K run, and now it's time for me to go to my kickboxing gym. Want to see the inside of a Japanese car? This is a Honda Inbox. We're allowed to have a TV in the front, no problem. GPS. And then there's all the dials. Most of it's all in English. As you can see, there's absolutely no Japanese except for the GPS and the TV. Everything else is rather you know, easy to follow. All right, I'll show you the next video next. In a bit. We just got here to my kickbox. As you can see, there's a rice field. is my coach. He's not here today. Every Saturday I train on my own. Um, essentially, I see my kickboxing coach on Mondays. He gives me my routine for the week. That's what I practice all week. And then I come out here on Saturdays and train some more on my own, working on the techniques he showed me on Monday night. And then every Sunday is jujitsu. I'll have a completely different podcast just for that, just so you can see some of the grappling and MMA training I do. But, you know, MMA is a little bit of everything. And right now I'm going to start off with some traditional martial arts. So, I'm going to start off with some traditional martial arts stretches. Right now, working on the splits. I ain't no Van Dam. I don't go all that far. I just try to do enough so that I get a nice stretch. If you notice, I didn't run before my... I didn't stretch before my run. Um, I've done a lot of research about this. Uh, a lot of it came from a book uh, called Born to Run by Christopher McDougall, I think it is. I might be butchering that guy's name. Great book if you want to learn some techniques about running. But his advice was you should stretch after a run, but not before. Or he actually said don't stretch at all. Some crazy research came out showing that when runners stretched before running, uh, they followed these runners in a longitudinal study for a year, and they found that the ones that stretched actually had more injuries. Um, something about your body being ready to run, and when you stretch, uh, I, guess your, I guess your joints and your muscles aren't as tight as they should be to keep everything together. So either way, I'm going to wrap up my martial arts stretches um, after my run. So I just finished running, do my stretches, and then do some traditional warm-up. And I'll show you a form or two right now. Before I start, I should probably mention um, a little bit of my background. I'm a second degree black belt in Kaju Kempo. Kaju Kempo is a Hawaiian martial art. It's Hawaiian Kempo, a mix of, of karate, uh, the, the Ju is for Jiu Jitsu Judo, the Ken is for uh, Kempo. Or my school specifically does wushu kung fu, and the bow is for boxing. Um, it's known as one of the original martial arts that was used to mix it together, and originally some claim it had a big stake in MMA a little later. Um, some of the guys involved in Hawaiian Kempo, Chuck Liddell, if you want to check that out, he, he did some Hawaiian Kempo. I've also heard rumors that some other MMA fighters that are pretty big done it. I don't want to drop more names, but just let you know. Uh, I'm a second degree black belt. I'm also a certified instructor in Kaju Kembo self defense along with Wushu Kung Fu basics. So, some of the stuff you're going to see in my traditional training comes from that. So, first, I like to start with some basics. It's a nice little warm up in traditional martial arts. Start with a uh, front stretch kick, my hands aside, pick up. Nice and easy. This is just for flexibility. Here, come on the inside, some inside crescents, and some outside crescents. And 
that's all basic wushu kung fu, just for a warm up. Next, for a little more of a traditional step, I'm going to start doing some more of the Okinawan Karate. Next, maybe squat, squat vertical punch, maybe horse stance coming in, striking, a side side down here. Again, this is all traditional karate moves. Come here, and then stretch in the foot. You like, you like throwing key eyes. Peace. And again, that's just to get your body warmed up. So, next we're going to do a few Hushu basics. Um, just going to get used to putting your body into motion. Start with a jumping inside. And then we're going to do a jumping outside crescent. And I know some of the, most of this stuff I wouldn't use in a real fight, but it's a great way to warm up. some punches. I do a few rounds of just front kicks. My hands up. Again, just warm it up in one position. I throw about 500 of these in three minutes. I do the front kicks. I work a little bit on my roundhouse kicks. And after finishing all that, I step over here. And I work on my heavy bag training. So, from right here, just kind of get situated. it all up at the end. That's pretty much my training. I just wrapped up about, I just wrapped up 12 rounds, three minutes each. That was after my traditional training, that was after my 5k. And uh, I normally do weight training during the week, this is just my Saturday routine, I should clarify that. So right now I'm just going to kind of wrap up um, with some pull-ups, some pull-ups, some crutches. Um, I do four different types, probably about what 300 crunches, 400 crunches or so, and then I do 10 pull-ups in between, finish off like 50 pull-ups. Really light. Again, tomorrow I have MMA sparring and jujitsu, so I don't try to completely demolish my body before sparring. I try to save that for during my actual uh, jujitsu training. That's when I try to go to exhaustion. 
Alright, that wraps up my workout. Next we'll see what I'm going to do for lunch. So just kind of following more of the daily routine, I, I just finished lunch. Uh, the rice and salmon I set up earlier this morning. And, uh, and unfortunately I ran out of memory on the card, so I didn't get ready for that, sorry. Um, but either way, after that, I took like a 20 minute power nap. And now I'm going to have my cup of coffee. Uh, no sugar. And it's Saturday. It's my cheat day. I'm going to have some bankuhen. Which is like a Japanese, kind of like a sweet cake, I guess. It kind of comes off in layers like this. So you kind of kind of cut like that and you can eat it piece by piece. Normally I just have the coffee, but today's my cheat day. So I'll have a little bit of coffee, a little bit of cake. I don't feel guilty. I train for like. I don't feel guilty because I trained for about almost two or three hours this morning, so it's all good. Uh, so, I'm going to enjoy my coffee and my cake with my daughter for a bit, and uh, my day, my 24 hours is almost up for this social jello show. Let's stay posted. We still have a wrap up to do, and one more thing that I do every day. Just woke up. Good morning. Was it a nice nap? Yeah. And now she's uh, pushing out a nice poo. So I'm kind of waiting for her to finish up before I change her diaper. See, so I already doubled up. That's how you do it. You get the, you see, you get the old, you get the new one. You put it under the old one, and you open everything up and you clean it all up with girls front to back, not back to front. Causes problems. Something you guys should know if you have a daughter. Either way, that's all I got to say. So that's it. That's pretty much my day wrapped up. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. And again, like my main premise is just have a daily routine and have things that you enjoy to do and do them. Some of these things you might not enjoy doing, and you're doing them already. So really, it's about changing your perspective on what you're already doing. Of course, this was a Saturday in my life. I have different routines for every day. But, you know, just kind of keep in mind that um, we get so wrapped up in things that we do that we kind of sometimes mindlessly go through our day, and we shouldn't be dichotomizing these things between was it a good day, was it a bad day, was I bored? Because really, there's no reason that you should be bored. If you focus on something that you want to do on a goal, and whatever it is that you're doing, um, you're never going to find yourself with uh, free time where you're just not sure what to do and you end up feeling like you're wasting time. Um, and even if you do waste time, there's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy wasting time. Just enjoy what you do. That pretty much wraps up this episode of Social Jello. Um, have a good day. Have a great week. Have a good night. Um, don't forget to, spot, to follow us on Twitter. Like our Facebook page. And we recently got a Tumblr up. Um, so check that out as well. And we started posting photos on Instagram. Some of the stuff that happens out here in Japan. I hope you enjoyed. 